Hello my friends, in today's video I'll share with you 3 essential tips for better slide design. So first of all we will start with alignment. Alignment is super important if you wish your slides to look well balanced and well structured. And as you can see on this slide a couple of shapes are misplaced because alignment is missing. But don't worry, I'll show you how we can turn this slide into this slide. Skadoosh, super duper awesome. And to achieve this result we'll be using a couple of powerful alignment tools such as center guides, margins, rows and columns. And next we will jump into the world of fonts, we will explore different categories of fonts that you can use in your presentations, we will look at letter spacing, line spacing and font weights. At the same time I'll share with you a couple of my favorite fonts that you can use in your presentations as well. Alright and after that we will jump into colors and colors are super essential because as you can see the same slide can look completely different but different set of colors so we will definitely explore the power of colors and now let's start with alignment. Ok my friends so let's see how we can improve this slide and make it much more balanced by using alignment. And before we jump into the action here's a little bit of information regarding alignment tools. So first of all you can use center guides which will show you the center of your slide which is really useful when you want to insert a slide title. Next you can add margins that will add some safe area around the edges of your slide that's useful when you want to place a logo side of the corners and next you can use rows and columns to position the rest of your slide content. That's wonderful. And as well you can use smart guides. Smart guides will help you align all of your shapes on your beautiful slide as well. Alright my friends so let's finally grab this slide and let's improve it ok. So let's just zoom out a little bit so that we have a good view of this slide and now let's uh, activate those center guides. So let's go to view and let's click on guides and now as you can see we have these uh, little two lines, one vertical and one horizontal and they show us where's the center. And as well let's make sure that we are displaying smart guides. They will help us to align all of our different shapes on the slide. And as you can see the slide title is on the left side of the slide, it's not going to be in the center, it's going to be on the left side and as well all of these shapes are going to be on the left side. So using the center guides is not going to be enough, we'll need additional guides and for that we can use rows and columns. We could as well use margins but let's just keep it simple and let's use rows and columns. And now all we have to do is decide how many columns we'd like to have, so let's say 12 columns. And let's decide how many rows, for example 8 rows. So how do we actually insert a grid of 12 columns and 8 rows. And as always there's more than one way to achieve the same result. You could add more vertical guides and more horizontal guides or you could go to view and activate grid lines. This would give you this little dotted grid. And another option could be using PowerPoint plugins that help you create all of those guides. But my favorite way is to use a simple table. So let's just go to insert table and let's click on insert table. And now let's just choose how many columns we want, so let's say 12 and for the rows let's insert 8. And of course you can experiment with these numbers until you get what you like. Let's hit ok and here is our beautiful red table. And now let's make our table a little bit more minimal. Let's choose uh, this design for example. Now as you can see our table has these black lines. So for the pen color let's choose white and now let's click on all borders. And now our table has these beautiful white lines. Okay. And now let's position this table to this uh, top left corner of the slide. We can as well jump to align options and make sure that this table is aligned to the left and top of the slide. That's beautiful. And now let's grab this bottom right corner of the table and let's stretch the table until it covers the whole slide just like that. Voila ladies and gentlemen, now we have our beautiful grid of 12 columns and 8 rows. Alright so our beautiful grid is ready and now we can start using it and before that let's just send it to back so that we can access the rest of the slide elements. Ok so as you can see there are a couple of things that we need to align on this slide so let's start with the logo, let's uh, position it to this first square of our beautiful grid. Now for this little mouse icon let's just move it upwards a little bit to the middle of the slide, that's good. Now for these two text boxes, first of all let's align the text to the left side, of course you can align it to the right if you wish. And for this little button let's align the text to the center just like that. Ok and now let's decide where we would like to position this slide title, so let's position it right here so that we have two squares from the top and two squares from the left side. Ok and now let's grab our little uh, paragraph text box and let's position it just below the slide title. Alright, looking good. And now let's grab our rounded rectangle which is our little button and let's position it just below the paragraph text. Ok, everything is looking beautiful. 
Okay, my friends, and next let's adjust the size of the smartphone because currently it's too huge. So let's just leave one empty row here at the top. Okay, and let's do the same here at the bottom. Let's leave one empty row here at the bottom. That's beautiful. And now let's move this smartphone left and right until it feels right. Just like that. Okay, and now all that's left to do is to adjust the position of this little menu icon and let's adjust this little text box with 2022. Okay, my friends, let's go to selection pane and I think we can hide this table. Okay, and this is the final result, our aligned beautiful slide. Well done, my friends. And I think we could practice a little bit more, so let's align this slide as well. So here we have a little timeline. And as you can see, we have a couple of uh, text boxes and all of these text boxes are all over the place. So let's align them and let's bring harmony to this slide. And once again, I think we could use the grid. So let's just use the grid that we have created in this slide. Let me just unhide it in the selection pane. Let's just use the selection pane to select the table. Now let's just hit Ctrl C to copy the table and let's paste it right here. Okay, let's send it to back so that we can access all of these beautiful elements and now let's just start working. Okay, and I think a good starting point would be aligning this icon to the center of the slide. And before doing that, let's make sure that we select this yellow circle, the icon, and now let's align them to the center and to the middle and now let's just group them into one beautiful group. And now we can align them to the center and middle of the slide. That's super duper awesome. And now for this text box 2024, let's just move it upwards a little bit. And now for this text box below, let's center align it and let's make sure it's aligned to the center of the slide and let's just move it below just like that. Looking good. All right, my friends, and next we can align the rest of these year text boxes. So now let's make sure that we bring the rest of these text boxes just above 2024 text box because this is the correct one. And now let's make sure that we select all of these year text boxes. Let's go to align and choose align to bottom. And now all of these year text boxes are on the same level. That's super duper awesome. And now for these paragraph text boxes, let's do the opposite. So first of all, let's make sure that we bring the rest of the text boxes below this text box in the middle, which is the correct one. Let's select them all. Let's make sure that the text is center aligned. And now let's go to align and let's choose align to top. And now all of these paragraph text boxes are on the same level as well. Okay, and the next step is to make sure that each year text box is aligned to this circle, to the icon and to the paragraph text box. So let's make sure that all of them are selected and let's align them to the center. And as well, we can grab all of these guys while holding down the shift key and group them into one beautiful group. You can just right click and choose group or just hit Ctrl G. Okay, and let's do the same procedure for the rest of the years. And before grouping, let's make sure that all of these guys for 2023 are aligned to center just like that. Now we can hit Ctrl G. Okay, these guys in the middle are looking nice. Let's just group them into one group. Okay, and now let's make sure that 2025 and 2026 are center aligned and grouped as well. Okay, my friends, you're doing wonderful and we're pretty much finished with this slide. And the last step is to make sure that we have equal gaps between these years. And the grid is really useful in this case because we can position these years in such a way that we have basically one column space between each of these years. Okay, let's move 2026 to the left side just like that and everything is looking beautiful. And if we would like to be super precise, we can select all of these groups. Let's go to align options and let's make sure that we distribute these guys horizontally. Now we have equal horizontal gaps for sure. Okay, my friends, let's go to selection pane and now we can safely deactivate the table, our beautiful grid. This is our beautiful align slide. Congratulations, my friends. And now let's jump to fonts, the second super important tip for improving your slide design. And my main suggestion here is basically go out and try out new fonts. In my opinion, picking a new font is one of the easiest and fastest way to change your presentation design and hopefully improve it. Of course, you have to make sure that your chosen font goes well with your presentation because each font has its own feeling. If you would like to have a classical or elegant look, serif fonts would be the best choice for you. And if you would like your slides to look modern and formal, in such case I would recommend sans serif fonts. And if you'd like to have a casual look or creative look, you could play with handwritten fonts or brush fonts. And at the same time, remember that you can adjust letter spacing, line spacing and font weights to achieve different looks. 
We'll explore that in a second. And before that, let's look at a couple of websites where you can find some beautiful fonts for your presentations. And the first one is Google Fonts. And what I like about Google Fonts is that you can filter out the different font categories. So for example, currently we're checking out the serif fonts. And by the way, the serif fonts are called serif fonts because they have little tails on some of the letters. And sans serif fonts basically means without those little tails. And these fonts are much more clean, minimal and modern. And now let's quickly jump to another website. This one is called dafon.com and this website is really good when you're looking for some kind of creative handwritten or brush fonts such as caramel and vanilla. All right, my friends, let's have some fun and let's apply a new font to our beautiful slide title. Currently it's set to Montserrat, which is a sans serif font. And let's try using Libri Baskerwell font, which is a serif font. And right away, as you can see, our slide title looks completely different and has a different feeling. So let's uh, set a Libri Basque wheel to this little button as well. And now it looks like our slide title and this little button comes from some kind of magazine. That's awesome. How easily and fast you can change the look and feel of your slide. And now let's see what happens if we choose Dynatopia, a handwritten font, and once again, a completely different look and feel. This way it feels much more playful. And if you think that your letters are too close together, you can go to letter spacing options and choose one of the loose presets. Okay, and this way your letters will have more space. Alright, and next let's try out a brush font. Let's use a caramel and vanilla font and let's apply it to our slide title and this little button. Okay, and as I can see these letters are really close together. Let's uh, try out very loose spacing. Okay, and one more thing we could do instead of uppercase, let's use sentence case for each of these words. So let's type in the slide title once again. I think uh, this way it looks much better. And one more thing we could do, we could adjust the line spacing, okay? So let's go to paragraph options and here we have line spacing options. Now it's set to multiple. Let's try single. And as you can see this way there is a bigger gap between the lines and I think this way the text is much more readable. Okay, so let me undo a couple of times and let's get back to Montserrat font. And let's talk about line spacing a little bit more. So usually when you will insert a fresh blank new text box into a slide, PowerPoint will give you a line spacing which is called single and which looks like this. And you might say, hey, these gaps, you know, between the lines, they are too huge. I would like to have, you know, smaller gaps. So in such a case, you could go to line spacing and choose multiple and you could try something like 0.8. Okay, hit OK. And as you can see now, the lines come closer together. And if you would like your lines of text to almost touch each other, you could try something smaller, for example, 0.7. And as you can see, the gap between the lines is pretty minimal. All right, my friends. And next, let's talk about font weights. So usually for slide titles, you'll be using heavier font weights. And for smaller or paragraph text, you'll be using lighter weight. And currently this text box is set to Montserrat Light, so let's try setting it to Montserrat Thin, which is even a lighter font weight. Okay, and let's check it out on the full screen, let's see if we can still read this paragraph text. We have to make sure that our fonts are not only beautiful, but readable as well. Alright my friends, and next let me share with you a couple of my most favorite fonts that I've been using throughout the years, and the first one is Montserrat, as you have probably noticed. So for the slide titles, I'm usually using Montserrat Bolt, uh, 50 points, for the subtitles, 14 points, and for the regular paragraph text, uh, about 10 points. And another sans serif font that I really like is called Lato. I'm using pretty much the same font sizes, all right? And one more sans serif font that I enjoy using is called Railway. As you can see, I'm into sans serif fonts. I guess that's because they have this really modern and minimal look. Alright my friends, and one more tip, if you would like to quickly change all of the fonts in your presentation, let's say you would like to change railway font to something else, you could go to home, replace fonts, and now just basically choose a font that you would like to replace, so let's say railway, okay, and let's replace it with, uh, let's uh, just for fun choose Dynotopia, which is a handwritten font, and let's click on replace, and skadoosh, this way we have quickly replaced all of the railway text boxes to Dynatopia. All right, my friends, you're doing wonderful. And now let's jump to the world of colors. And as I have mentioned before, colors are super essential. As you can see, the same slide can look completely different with different set of colors. 
And in the same way as with fonts, you get different feelings, different emotions. With different colors, you get different emotions as well. So make sure that you choose the right colors for your presentation, for your presentation mood. If you would like to be more formal, you could use less colors, for example, black and white or a monochrome palette. And of course, if you'd like to be more playful, you could use more colors. Just make sure that all of those colors work well together. And of course, there might be situations where you have to follow your company guidelines and use your brand colors. In such a case, experimenting with colors is not possible. But if you have a complete creative freedom, then definitely check out new color palettes. And one of my favorite places to get inspiration for color palettes is Adobe Color. And what's awesome about this tool is that you can learn how different color harmonies work. So in the analogous color harmony, as you can see, all of the colors uh, stay together. Of course, you can spread them out, but uh, the main idea is that all of these colors are pretty much on the same side of the color wheel. And as you can see, we have many more options. So let's see how monochrome uh, color harmony works. So with the monochrome, you're basically using the same hue for all of your colors. Let me just change the color mode to HSB. And as you can see, this H value hue is uh, the same for all of the colors, 232. And let's see what happens if we grab these color pickers and move them to a different position. So once again, the hue value is the same across all of the colors. The only difference is the saturation and the brightness. Okay, so feel free to explore the rest of the possibilities that you get on Adobe Color. All right, and now let's check out one more awesome website that I like to use for color palette inspiration. And this is colors.co. And let's say you find a color palette that you like, for example, this one. So one way to copy this color palette is just to use a screenshot tool that you have on your computer. Let's just copy that color palette and paste it into our slide. OK, let's just reduce the size of this uh, color palette snapshot. And now let's select any shape that we like on this slide. Let's go to fill options, solid fill. Let's choose the eyedropper tool. And now we can use it to copy any color that we wish from the color palette to this shape. OK, and in the same way with uh, the eyedropper tool, we can quickly copy the colors from the color palette and paste them into the shapes or text boxes that we wish. All right, so the new colors have been applied and now our slide has a new look. And by the way, if you'd like to add your custom colors to your theme colors, as you can see, when we go to shape fill, we have these color swatches. So let me show you how you can add those custom colors to those color swatches. So once again, let's get back to colors.co and let's copy any of these hex codes. So each color has a hex code. Now let's go to design. Let's go here to variants. Let's go to colors and let's choose customize colors. So here we have six accent colors. Let's expand accent color number one. Let's go to more colors. And here we can paste in the new hex code. All right, let's click OK. Let's expand accent one once again, and now we should see our new beautiful light green color. All right, let's make sure we save our new color palette. And now if we would go to our color swatches, we should see our first beautiful custom light green color. All I can say is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Congratulations, my friends. Now you know how you can improve your slide design with three powerful tools, alignment, fonts and colors and of course there are many more awesome discoveries in your slide design journey such as transitions icons infographics animations 3d models shadows illustrations photos and videos and probably many more that i have not listed on this slide so thank you for watching stay happy stay healthy and as always tutorial slides will be made available on patreon to all of my friends and supporters who support me and help me do what i love creating the best powerpoint tutorials for you that i can Thanks for watching, I'll see you on my next video.